Well, time to bust out the strange. Beck stared in silence, the only sign of life being the twitch of an eye. At the sight of Iggy taunting Beck, something in Luca snapped. Iggy's smirk shifted to a look of shock as Luca launched himself into his stomach. Iggy's clothes were drenched in the glowing ooze. Iggy's voice began to slur as he struggled to get up. person at the warehouse. The strange ooze and what it did to Iggy. Was Rolo caught up in all of this? Beck glanced toward Luca. Rolo was safe. A wave of relief washed over Luca, which was quickly replaced by a sense of dread. Gran is going to kill me. If he hurried, he might just make it home before sundown. Chapter 4 our harvest awaits. Luca took a deep breath and gingerly opened the door, stealing himself for Gran's wrath. Luca was alone. The house was empty. Luca was sitting by the pond, listening to small waves lap against a rock. His father sat in a folding chair in front of him. Without turning, he spoke. Why don't you grab me some nice bait? Sure thing, Dad. Luca hopped over to the tackle box and popped open the lid. Inside was a rolling, buzzing mass. We're fishing with bees? Luca's father gave a warm chuckle. Well, you catch more fish with bees than honey. Pick us out a good one. Luca closed his eyes and plucked out a bee. He could feel its wings struggle between his finger and thumb. Holding it at arm's length, he hurried over. His father deftly baited the hook and examined his work. Interesting choice. With a practiced flick of the wrist, the line buzzed in a graceful arc. The water accepted it without a splash or ripple. The wrong choice, but I respect it. The pond began to freeze over. Sometimes we gotta make the wrong choice before we can make it right. Pallid ice propagated across the still surface with an alarming speed. Lucas scrambled back as the ground beneath him turned cold. Dad, 
I don't understand. Sorry, kiddo. Understanding isn't always part of the deal. The relentless ice shot through the fishing line toward his father. Dad, look out! His father casually wound the reel. None of it's your fault, you know. Never was. Dad, we have to go! Luca grabbed his father's shoulders, trying to pull him away. Please, you have to run! The ice crackled as it spread across his father's hands. That's the thing about fishing, Luca. His chest began to crystallize. You toss your hook in, and you never know what you're gonna pull out. A shock of searing cold ran up Luca's arms. He gave one last desperate tug. The chair tipped backwards in a single frozen mass. Luca tried to stop the momentum, but it was too late. He watched the icy form of his father slam into the hard ground, shattering into a thousand pieces that crowded around his feet. Dad, I don't understand. What does all this mean? The gentle rustle of leaves was the only reply. Luca's eyes struggled to focus on the walkie-talkie. Faintly, he could hear Rollo amongst the noise. Rollo's voice was coming through more clearly now, but some words were still just static. The signal went silent. Luca held still, waiting for a response, his pounding heartbeat marking the passage of time. Lolo's voice began to fade. With that, the signal died for good. Luca grabbed the walkie-talkie and sprinted to the treehouse. a group of footsteps approaching. He dashed behind the bushes to avoid being spotted. <laughs> Mr. Tolliver paused, shifting his eyes to one side. <laughs> Mr. Tolliver took one long, quiet breath. <laughs> the three shared a determined look.
For a town that saw few visitors, the welcome was perhaps more grand than necessary. shared a mischievous grin. Luca could only see a cloaked shape behind the rocket. He strained to hear as a muffled voice began. Fear gripped Luca's throat. Luca stared at the ground for a moment, trying to place the dampened voice. The figure shifted slowly from behind the rocket, revealing itself to Luca. Luca reached over empathetically. Iggy's tone jolted to dejected anger. Luca slumped to the ground, overwhelmed by guilt.
Iggy slumped to his knees. Luca grabbed the walkie-talkie and headed for the window. Luca and Iggy climbed up the back of the treehouse to its roof, where Rollo had constructed his MCDC, the Mission Control Defense Cannon. From behind the crowd of clipboards, William Kerr strode forward, a warm smile on his face. Altered. Luca's grip tightened on the MCDC. He was caught in a trap. What do you do when there's no hope? Iggy wiped his cheeks with a sleeve. What are you gonna do, Luca? Luca drew himself up and decided to take the only option they had left. Fight. He swung the mission control defense cannon around, aiming it confidently at the smirking face of William Kerr. Luca summoned his most insolent demeanor. Kerr turned his back on the two boys. With a nonchalant wave of the hand, he made his exit. As the clipboards began to slowly advance on the treehouse, Luca looked to Iggy with resignation in his eyes. The end. That escalated quickly. Maybe discretion was the better part of valor here. Let's put a pin in this for now. This is a story about struggle. Luca could hear a machine humming somewhere nearby. He felt around wildly, searching for something, anything that could help. His hands found a hard object, maybe a tile? He yanked it free, lifting the cold stone. Let me go! Luca swung the tile as hard as he could at the shape that still held fast to his leg. He heard the crack of glass as the stone hit the assailant's mask. With a muffled yelp, the hand let go. Luca was free and scrambled to the door. He never looked back once on the long run home. Chapter 3. Everything's fine. The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence.
The road leading to Beacon Pines was long and uninspiring. A sort of natural barrier for the impatient. Eris Valentine, oldest of Sharper Valentine's children and heir to the Valentine fortune, had a way of making questions seem like demands. Mr. Wilder had learned to assume that if he was hearing from Eris, it was because she had taken issue with something he had put in the paper. Mr. Wilder averted his gaze and began to polish his monocle. Huddled at his counter, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining apples. More accurately, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining one apple. With a yelp, Mr. Tolliver fumbled the apple, flailing at the air as it fell. He leaned forward and lowered his voice. He leaned in a bit further. Mr. Tolliver leaned back, speaking loud enough for anyone to hear. He reached forward and snapped up the jars of jam, giving Luca a little wink. He leaned in for a final whisper.
She leaned forward and pinched Luca's cheek. shifted the basket uncomfortably. Mrs. Fratelli lifted the cloth and inspected the jam. She carefully lifted out her jars of jam. Luca squinted at the faded photo of him and his mom at the diner. Memories of that day came flooding back. Luca glanced at the empty seat across from Gus. Mr. Nuncreed eyed Luca for a moment, then nodded in agreement. Nuncreed snatched the basket from Luca. Beck locked eyes with Luca. The look on her face was equal parts expectant and desperate. Beck gave Luca a quick nudge.
Jeff dug through his pockets for a bit. took a long breath, then gave a firm nod. Chapter 4, Dinner with the Moodwills. Ilona Moodwill was worried about change. A gardener at heart, she understood the necessity of change, relied on it even. But there was a difference between the controlled world of her plants and this cluttered cottage in a strange town. Almost done. Nellie was a blur of activity, digging through boxes. Sorry, love. Couldn't find the dishes. We'll have to make do with paper plates. Dinner went by without much conversation. As she watched Beck and Luca finish up their pizza, Ilona let herself relax into the chair. The things she cared about were still here. Nellie finally had the job of her dreams. Beck was beginning to take root. Ilona's task was simply to tend to them. She could do that. Luca's eyes were fixed to his plate, pushing a chunk of pineapple around with his finger. Nellie was the one who eventually broke the silence. Ilona nervously gestured toward the boxes. Luca wiped his face with his sleeve. Beck gave Luca a swift kick under the table. Luca glanced over to Beck. She seemed to be holding her breath. Beck slammed her fist into the table, perhaps harder than she intended. Luca glanced outside to gauge the time. The sky was darker than he expected, filled with ominous clouds. Luca wiped his mouth one last time with his napkin and started to get up. Surprised, Luca turned around. He knew Rolo could be prickly around new people. But Beck seemed cool. Rolo would warm up to her eventually. Probably. 
Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to rumble with ominous. Luca surveyed the roiling clouds. At that moment, the heavens opened up, unleashing torrential rain. Luca squinted into the eye hole of the microscope. Luca adjusted the slide with his fingers to get a better look. Luca wiped his hand off on his sweater and gave a nervous laugh. Beck looked down, timidly tapping the ladder with her feet. Luca flicked at one of the toggles. Luca bent down to examine the bouquet of wilting flowers. Judging by the odor, they were well past their prime. He flipped open the attached card. to watch the rivulets of water running down the window. Luca took a deep breath, exhaling slowly. Luca let out a feral scream that echoed into the night. Her voice dropped to a 
trembling whisper. Beck brushed off her shirt and straightened up. As abruptly as it began, the storm abated. Beck gave Luca a light thump on the arm before heading in. Chapter 5. Friendly Feud. The air was heavy with a hard rain's residue. The smell of wet things. Despite his dreary surroundings, Luca felt at peace. He'd never shared those details about his dad with anyone. Not even Rollo. But it's not like this changed anything. Rolla was still his best friend. Adding Beck to the group would help balance things out. Everything's better in threes. This is what Luca told himself as he headed to the treehouse. Luca had only ever heard him speak in this stiff yet gentle tone a few times, and it always meant one thing. Rollo scoffed. Luca stumbled on his words, knowing he'd said too much. Luca became instinctively angry in response. 
Both boys were now shouting across the distance. tone changed to a calm, yet more intense, anger. The words hung in the cold night air. Rolo's stomach dropped, knowing he'd crossed a line. But it was too late. Luca dug through his old stuff, not even sure what he was looking for. Gran cooed gently from the hallway. Luca just wanted to be alone. He waited to hear the sound of the front door closing. Luca dozed off again. Luca still couldn't bring himself to go out. Besides, if he ran into Rolo, he'd have to actually confront the situation. The Adventures of Hank Atomic. Luca carefully opened the cover and began to read. Rollo had received it for his birthday, a special hardcover edition with behind the scenes commentary and bonus art. Rollo cherished it, but asked that Luca keep it at his house. Luca wasn't sure if it was because Rollo didn't trust himself with it, didn't trust his sister around it, or just wanted an excuse to come hang out at Luca's more often. Whatever the reason, Luca didn't mind, but it had stayed right there where Rollo had stashed it ever since. Now, at the foot of his bed, Luca lost himself in the pages. He'd read it all before, but at this moment, it somehow felt sentimental. He was well into issue number five when he heard soft footsteps from the hallway.
without realizing it, Luca had pouted away the entire afternoon. He once again felt the weight of it all and allowed his weary eyes to close. Luca stood in a vast black expanse. He looked up at his father standing beside him. Walt was working a straw at the bottom of a fountain glass, trying to collect the last bits of milkshake. Dad? Where? Taking a final loud gurgling sip, his father peered up from the glass. He jangled the straw playfully with a warm smile, then lifted the empty glass as if to point into the darkness. The source? Luca's eyes followed his father's gesture. In an instant, he was sitting in front of a blazing campfire. Across from him sat a large figure in a yellow hazmat suit. The figure's voice was a scratchy echo. Well, if it isn't the man of the hour, make yourself comfortable. Luca held his shivering hands over the flame to warm himself. It doesn't work that way here. Their yellow-gloved hand pointed to the base of the flame. It's a cold flame, see? Luca peered at the base of the fire. It wasn't wood that was burning. It was Beacon Pines itself. Tiny buildings, freezing and crumbling as they were consumed by flame. Luca could see small shadows moving in the burning city. People. Luca leapt to his feet. We've got to help them! The figure gave a dismissive wave of their hand. Why waste energy helping people who can't even help themselves? The figure bent down to examine the panicked crowd as they desperately tried to stop the flames. They only care about what's right in front of them. Not like us. Luca's voice was a trembling whisper. Us? The figure slowly stood up, grabbing its helmet with both hands. With a jolt and a twist, the suit emitted a gasp. A cloud of torpid mist escaped, slowly revealing the face within. Luca's own face looked back at him. Older, worn, distant. The sensation was oddly familiar, as if he'd caught his own reflection by surprise in the mirror. The doppelganger smiled. I tried to help once. He gestured towards his face. And all it got me was this. Luca staggered back. You aren't me. Luca felt a hand catch his shoulder. His father was there again, beside him. Every choice sets us on a path. This is the end of one of your paths, son. Luca watched his older self shake its head ruefully, its face twisting into a cruel grin. Welp, Dad. If you wanted him to see this, far be it from me to disappoint. Luca watched in shock as the figure took a confident step forward and plunged into the flames. In a flash of cold light, he was gone. What does all of this mean? Luca felt a reassuring squeeze on his shoulder. Just remember why we choose matters just as much as what we choose. Luca woke up to see a hazy figure at the foot of his bed, silhouetted in the morning sun. Luca rubbed his eyes. The kind, concerned face of his gran came into focus. Grand silenced Luca with a gentle pat on the leg. 